welcome to Hard Talk India. After the Prime Minister, undoubtedly the second most important job in government is that of the Home Minister of India. The challenges he has to tackle are Kashmir and the North East, insurgency and terrorism, communalism and Ayodhya. And how is he going to do it? That's the core question that I'm going to put today to the new Home Minister of India, Shivraj Patil. Home Minister, before we come to the challenges you face, let me ask you a question about yourself. You lost your own election in Latour, yet nine days later you were appointed Home Minister. Was that proper and fitting? I contested ten elections. Out of ten elections, the last election I lost. Eight elections to the parliament, two elections to the state legislature and one election to the local body. One can say that it is correct, one can say that it is not correct. But the constitutional provision is that a minister can be a minister for six months without being a member of the parliament. And if he doesn't get into the parliament within six months' time, he suggests to be the minister. Constitutionally, you're completely correct. But what about the verdict of the people of Latour? Is this not contempt for the way they voted? Verdict of the people is for one constituency. It is not a nationwide verdict. Nationwide verdict will be given after saying as to how the person works. So in other words, losing an election doesn't debar you from becoming a minister? There have been cases in which the persons have lost and persons have not been in the parliament and yet they have been included in the cabinet. It may make me uncomfortable, but if the purpose of being in the ministry is to govern properly and help the people and achieve the objective, it may not be wrong. A bigger controversy has been created by the fact that the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, has inducted into his cabinet MPs who are charged with crimes such as corruption, extortion, rape, even attempts to murder. Should people charged with such crimes become ministers? We should be charitable to the persons against whom the cases have been filed. Cases of any kind can be filed against anybody. Unless and until that person is convicted, he is supposed to be innocent. And if we had not formed the government, other side would have formed the government. And even the other side would have included the ministers against whom cases have been filed, in which thousands of people have been killed. Except for the fact, Home Minister, that some of the people we are talking about were made to resign from earlier governments because of these charges. Today, in including them in his cabinet, is Dr. Manmohan Singh not suggesting that his moral standards are somehow lower than those of Deva Gowda or even Rabli Devi? Well, you can put any interpretation on any incident that has taken place or any action taken. That depends on how we look at these things. We shall have to take into account that after the elections, government had to be formed. And if anybody would have formed the government, I think some such criticism could have been leveled against some persons included in the ministry. Except for the fact that this is not a technical question of legal right and wrong, it's a question of moral propriety. You've heard of the phrase, Caesar's wife should be above suspicion. What about Caesar's cabinet? Is it proper that his minister should have served time in jail? You see, if we had not formed the government, others would have formed the government. And there would have been the ministers in that government who were responsible for killing of thousands of people. You're talking about country. Dr. Joshi, Mr. Advani. I'm not mentioning any name you have mentioned. Except for the fact that all you're saying is that you're as good or as bad as they were. I'm not sitting in judgment on what should be done and what should not be done. And if you are sitting in judgment, we shall have to look into ourselves to find out whether we can ask these questions. I'm not sitting on judgment, Home Minister. I'm referring to the fact that in the last parliament as deputy leader of the Congress party, you frequently called for the resignation of Mr. Radwani and Dr. Joshi on the grounds they were charge sheeted. Now, in appointing people similarly charge sheeted, you're guilty of hypocrisy and double standards. I, I think you are not correct on that point. In fact, we knew that the incident had taken place in broad daylight. We knew that the entire country was disturbed. We knew that it had repercussions outside the country. And we knew that because of that incident, thousands of people had lost their lives. And yet, frequently, we did not do it. We did raise it, and we left it at that. Parliament, which has just finished its first session, was unable to sit because of this issue. Are you confident that when it reconvenes in July, this won't be another problem again? 
I would say that those who have been telling us that we should conduct ourselves in a proper manner in the house and allow that the business should be conducted should decide what they should do and I hope that they, they would decide in a proper manner to allow the house to conduct the business. All right, in that case, let's come to the challenges you face as Home Minister of India. Many would say that perhaps the biggest challenge is the internal situation in Jammu and Kashmir. In your party's vision statement document, which came out in March, you extensively criticized the NDA government for their handling of Jammu and Kashmir, but you didn't say anything about what you would do. So let me ask you, do you have a Kashmir policy? We know the complications involved in the problem. And that is why we have been careful in saying anything against anybody and planning as to how to deal with this issue. We do think that first thing we shall have to do is to talk to the people who are there and try to persuade them to see that these kinds of issues should be handled in a very uh, just and uh, sympathetic and correct manner. You're talking about we would, the we would separatist organization, Hurriyat. You said that you would have talks with them, but the Hurriyat chairman has publicly said that he's not interested in retracing old steps. He wants substantive talks that break fresh ground and go further. Are you prepared for that? Talk means talk on different issues. Issues which are very important, issues which are more important. And we will certainly be talking on those issues. And we will try to see as to how there is meeting of mind between the two sides. And we will try to solve the problem through talks. But that's not the only thing. We shall have to do some other things also. Economic passage will help them. Then providing employment to the people will help them. And certainly the government has the authority which can be used if required to tackle the problem if it cannot be tackled. In but the let's for now stick to the political dialogue which everyone believes is primary. The whole is widely believed to be under pressure to show results, otherwise they may be forced to opt out. Pressure, pressure by whom? Pressure from their own domestic opinion within the valley. Can you help them show results? They, we shall have to do things which are in the interest of all the people in Kashmir, which are in the interest of India. If anybody is working under pressure, they shall have to talk to those who are exerting that pressure and make them see what can be done and what cannot be done. Except that moderates need to be rewarded for the step that they are taking in talking to the government of India. Are you prepared to reward them to encourage other people to join them? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Now one of the problems you face is that the Hurriyat has announced that whereas previously they spoke to Mr. Advani who was Deputy Prime Minister, this time they are reluctant to speak to you as just Home Minister because they say you're too junior. How do you get around that? Well, these are the things which are being created by some of us in the media and through the media. I think if the Home Minister is not capable of talking to them, if the Parliament, if the Prime Minister has to talk to them, we shall have to see if the Prime Minister can talk to them. And one would say that the Prime Minister is also guided by the Cabinet, then we will talk to the Cabinet. One would again say that the Parliament is bigger than the Cabinet, and so we have talked to that. Now these are the things which have to be dealt with in a proper manner in order to solve this problem. If one is intending to solve the problem, one would take things as they come and try to find as to how the things can be solved. In other words, very quickly, protocol and the level at which talks are held should not be a problem. That's what you're saying. Well, I'm saying that we all are willing to talk to them. But supposing if such things are raised, now, officers have to talk to the people who are talking there to I, find I out the points me. on which the talks can be held. Without preparation, if you talk to them, you are talking to them in vacuum. But you are saying that if need be, the Prime Minister could step in as well. I am not saying anything of the kind, and you don't put that kind of interpretation on what I am saying. I am just replying to you. If they are not willing to talk to the present Home Minister, whom do they would be willing to talk to? What about the fact that you've also said that you would like to involve separatist leaders who so far have not spoken to the government? The problem is that if people like Gilani, Shabir Shah and Yasin Malik were not prepared to talk to Mr. Advani, who was Deputy Prime Minister, what can you as Home Minister say to make them talk to you? That is why we are saying that we are willing to talk to those who are willing to talk to us. 
that are you willing to offer them the branch of a conversation with the Prime Minister, perhaps even a preliminary one well, to break the deadlock? I, I am not going to make promises like this while talking to the media person. But are you ruling The governance is more complicated. But and you, such promises should not be extracted from the Home Minister of India when he is dealing with these kinds of things. Quite right. But you are not ruling <clears> it out either. I am not saying yes or no to it. Okay. I am saying that those who are given the responsibility to talk to them, they will talk to them. It's six months since the Ramzan ceasefire came into effect and now we're in the middle of summer. What is the situation regarding cross-border infiltration? Well, we shall have to be vigilant and we shall have to see what is going to happen. And uh, we would be vigilant and alert and see what has to be done. But is it at an acceptably low level at the moment or is it rising? I'm not saying anything on this point. I will keep that information to myself and I'll tell you that we will be vigilant. Except for the fact that your refusal to give an answer could worry people. Well, you should not create that kind of condition in the country. You but should also help me. I would like to help you. That's why I invite you to give me a clear answer, Home Minister. I can't. I mean, there are many things. You can't talk anything. I can't talk anything. All right, let's come to the wider problem of insurgency and terrorism that India faces. 57 years after independence, these twin subjects remain right at the top of every Home Minister's agenda. Does that worry you? It does worry me. It, does, it must be worrying all of us here. And these are the problems, you know, which have arisen out of the historical facts also. And there were periods when these problems were not really very difficult. And these problems have difficult in changed circumstances because of many factors which are available in the country and outside Is the country. Is political mishandling one of those factors? Well, you can blame anybody if you want to. We are not in the game of blaming this person or that person or this government or that government. We are saying that these are the factual, this is the factual position. We will take into account what is correct, what is not correct, and what has to be done, and we will try to handle it. In your party's vision statement, which was published some three months ago, you said, and I quote, Congress will implement a comprehensive, multifaceted strategy to cope effectively with the twin challenges of terrorism and insurgency. What is this comprehensive, multifaceted strategy? That's right. That you should understand. And I think that if this message goes to the people, it will be helpful to all of us in the country. One is to talk to them. Second is to give them the economic help and help them to develop the economy of the state and the people over there. Third is to educate them, persuade them, try to convince them that taking arms is not going to solve the problem. It sounds like they create a harmony. Them out of the problem. It, it, it is creating harmony and then using whatever is available with you to solve this problem. Let me put to you, your strategy seems to be an well, attempt to talk them out of their insurgency and terrorism. I, I, I don't think that these kinds of interpretations really help anybody. We don't want to talk this out or tire them by talking to them. We want to understand them. We want to convince them, persuade them, and we would like to give them the chance to convince and persuade us. It is a give and take. Home Minister, I'm interrupting you. You're going very far away from the accepted international position that there is no such thing as good terrorism, that there is no justification for terrorism. Now you're saying you want to understand it, you want to persuade them, you want to try and show them a way out. Are you changing your attitude to terrorism? No. You will not put wrong interpretation on my statements. I have not defined terrorism in any fashion. Terrorism is something which is not acceptable to the civilized society in the country and the world. That is the position. And yet, if some misguided brothers and sisters are there, it is our duty to see that they understand the situation in a correct fashion and act in a correct manner. But then what concerns people is that side by side with this attitude, your government has also announced that it's going to repeal the Prevention of Terrorism Act, was popularly known as POTA. Given that this is India's only specific legislation dealing with terrorism, why have you chosen not to amend it, to enforce it with greater care, rather than repeal it? You know, the laws by themselves are not useful and helpful if other methods are not adopted. Some laws are draconian laws and some laws are humane laws. Now, there was a criticism level against the laws of this nature which were enacted in the past. 
and under the pressure from those who had acted enacted this law those laws had to be given up now quota has come into existence and at the time when the quota was being enacted we were saying that existing laws will suffice and it is not necessary for us to have quota let, let me just that you say existing laws will suffice have you got empirical evidence to prove that existing laws will do so i'm i'm explaining i'm explaining to you is there any evidence to show that the quota has prevented what happened in gujarat is there any evidence to show that the quota has brought down the incidence of terrorism in the country is there no evidence that quota can be misused and those people who made this law had to amend the law saying that this has created problem home minister there may not be evidence that shows that quota has reduced terrorism but there is proof that quota has provisions that other laws don't have for instance it is only under quota that intercepted messages are legally admissible as evidence do away with quota and that evidence becomes useless to you and therefore your job in convicting terrorists becomes more difficult our job is to control and contain terrorism and this information can be used to contain and control terrorism it's not only that we are out to punish anybody we are out to control and contain terrorism and see that it is eradicated let me, let me, and it right, will help this this can be achieved even without having quota that's what you're saying but leading human rights lawyers like fali nariman who strenuously opposed quota when it was introduced in parliament today say that by repealing quota the government may be in danger of throwing the baby out with the bathwater i have not seen his statement and i am not going to comment on the statements made by mr nariman or any other person for that matter but that would be wrong method of commenting on the statements made by them so what about my the my my position is this since the beginning we are saying that the existing laws can be used to control and contain criminal activity without any terrorist empirical, activity but, but without any empirical evidence for that empirical evidence is there we have lived in this country even without quota and we have control when quota was day. let us understand when quota was not there there were um, terrorist activities taking place in the country in northeastern states Honestly, in punjab also and they were contained and controlled and eradicated let me put something to you many people say that if you repeal quota you could be in breach of un resolution 1373 worse they say that at a time when the international community is concerned about terror the message india will be sending out is that its importance is diminishing in delhi not at all that this kind of uh, interpretation should not be put on the actions the government would like to take and pressurize us to do something which we think in our judgment is not necessary to do we the world knows have suffered a lot and we have suffered so much that we cannot do anything which will not help the people in the world to control terrorist activities okay whatever we The yeah. third big challenge that you face is that of communalism. In the president's address to parliament delivered on the 4th of June, you said the government will adopt all possible measures to promote and maintain communal peace and harmony so that minorities feel completely secure. Yes. What are these measures? These measures relate to your attitude towards life. The people in high position should not keep making statements and creating a divide in the society saying that we and you in other words they want to change that, people's thinking the people who are in position they should not make any statements and impression should not be given that there are some good citizens and there are some citizens who cannot be treated as good citizens same, that kind of thing has first to be eradicated the same president addressed to parliament also committed the government it is not the statement of the president given to him by him personally these are the oh, statements well made that. by the executive i'm well aware of that i'm well aware of that home yes. minister the same president addressed that the government articulated its policies also committed the government to a model law to deal with communalism yes what is this law well that law details can be to examine and then one can speak about that i am not in a position to talk about it are you now. saying that at the moment the government doesn't have in its head or in its mind no, a no. framework for this law no that's that's not true it's not necessary to uh, speak about that prematurely 
Why? It seems as if you're hiding we will, details we will, from We people. will explain to you that laws cannot be made without informing the people and the parliament and without informing the media also. Oh, but Mr. before we take a decision in the cabinet, I'm not in a position to tell you what is going to be the shape of the law. But you can give some indication to no, people of the nature no, of the law. No, 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 I'll give you when the time comes. And then you will have one more interview if you want. I'll speak to you about the provision. In which case, what do you say to critics who turn around and say, that these are all generalities, that these are platitudes. The new government doesn't have specific, well thought out plans to handle communalism. You should understand that in the government, the president's speech, which is delivered for one hour, we cannot give all the details. It does not mean that the laws can be passed without having the details in our mind. Don't you feel a need in interviews to explain to the people what you intend to no, do? No, we, before time we can't do that. As a government we can't do that. You can do it, I can't do it. You said a moment ago that you would like to say to people in positions of authority that they should not abuse their position to create a discord. In fact, in the Common Minimum Program you write, and I quote, the UPA government will take the strictest possible action without fear or favor against all individuals and organizations who spread social discord, disturb social amity. Yes. Let me test you. Does this mean that the next time a Praveen Tugadia or a Narendra Modi... Why, do you, men why do you mention the name? Because I cannot tell you whether I will take action or I will not take because, action because the without real, knowing the facts because the real as to what they have done. But the real test is when you take no, a name. No, I, I will not, as a person sitting in the home ministry, talk about the individual. Okay, let's not take names. Are you telling me that the next time a high functionary of government or a high functionary of state taunts Muslim people by using phrases like Mia Musharraf and Babar Ki Aulad, you will then take the strictest possible action? You shall have to understand the meaning of what has been said there. It is very clear. Now, whether what you are saying will fall in the ambit of that definition or not will be seen. But and it, then, it seems to me that no, to call any no. member of a community Mia Musharraf mm -hmm. or Babar Ki Alok, is spreading social discord, it's disturbing social amity. We will see if we will we, we will see whether it falls in the definition of what you're is. shying away from giving no, me a clear I'm, answer. I'm not I'm not trying to create scare or I'm not going to say that I will not do it. I am trying to be correct and I cannot answer to the questions of this nature which are relating to the individuals without having the facts before me. I will not be doing that. And moreover, this will not come to my table also. This will be done at, 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 a, at a level where people are sitting there, they will examine. We are responsible for policies. We have given the policy. Interpretation of that policy will be done by them. And if wrong interpretation is not done, they are accountable. I am accountable to the Council of Ministers as well as to the Parliament. Okay, Home Minister, very quickly, at the moment, the press mm -hmm. in India is speculating about a verbal fight carrying on between the Congress government in Delhi and the Samajwadi Party government in Uttar Pradesh. I want to ask you a blunt question. Are you moving towards a position where you would use Article 326 of the Constitution to dismiss the UP government? What makes people think that we will be doing that? I'll answer that to you. You are about to launch a statewide agitation against the UP government, despite the fact that you technically support it. You know, you know that there have been persons, you know, who are in one government and yet they are criticizing against the government. In Maharashtra, this has happened. In other states, also happened. Supposing something is wrong in a state, the elected representative is not allowed to express what he feels. Home Minister, well, and if one is widening uh, his comments uh, to this extent and saying some drastic action is being, going, to be take, uh, going to be taken, well, he is misinterpreting. We are running out of time. We have only 40 seconds left. I'm repeating this because I think it's so important. It seems you're giving me an assurance that Article 326 will not be used to dismiss the UP government. You should be very clear in our mind that I do not give assurances when talking to the media persons. I do not give assurances in the parliament also. I keep that liberty with me to take proper action at a proper time in a proper time. So in other words, at a proper time, this government could be dismissed. I am not saying this. And you're not, not saying... Let, let us not create that kind of condition. And if my, my, my statement has not said that, but I am not going to 
speak on hypothetical situation and say I will do this and I will do Home that. Minister, you are clearly the master of creating ambiguity. We are going to have to leave it there. Well, Thank you very much for speaking. Yes. You are talking there. Yes. I, I, I have a responsibility to the people not to say things which should not be said and not to give the promises in the forums where it should not be given. We are going to have to leave it there. In a most proper and just manner. But and we will not fail in acting in proper and just manner. Home Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.